Hello everyone, in this video I will talk about direct tension test uh, performed on S4 binder. Uh, we often call it DTT test. DTT test is a regular uniaxial tension test performed on S4 binder. It measures the failure stress and failure strain of an S4 binder pulled apart at a constant rate of elongation, which is 1 mm per minute. And then from the experimental results, uh, we can pull out the stress versus strain curve. The tensile strain and stress in the specimen when the load reaches a maximum um, will be reported as the failure strain and the failure stress, respectively. This experimental process is described in ASTM D6723 and Ashto. T314. Both the DTT test and the BBR test are designed to measure uh, the S4 binder's resistance to um, thermal cracking. So same as BBR test, for DTT test, um, the experiment is conducted at minimum temperature plus 10 degrees Celsius. And also same as a BBR test, prior to testing, the sample needs to go through both short-term aging and long-term aging process. This is because thermal cracking is a phenomenon often found um, in older pavements. So DTD test measures the uh, sample's fracture properties at low temperatures. And the BBR test um, characterizes the stress relaxation properties of an S4 binder. And these two tests uh, can be combined together to give us a very good idea about whether or not a certain S4 binder will crack at low temperatures. This figure shows the dimensions of the uh, specimen and this figure shows the, how they actually looks, look like. So the question is how to combine the results from BBR test uh, and the results from DTT test. Um, remember that from BBR test, we measure the creep stiffness as a function of time. And this curve can be converted to predict the thermal stress produced in the hot mix S4 pavement. So if you conduct BBR test at different temperatures, then you should be able to uh, pull out this curve, which is called the thermal stress curve, uh, it, which is the thermal stress versus the temperature. As for how to convert creep stiffness curve into this thermal stress curve, it's very complicated. So I, I will now talk about it in this class. So after you obtained this thermal stress curve from BBR test, you can uh, pull out this failure stress curve from DTT test. So remember that DTT test measures the failure stress uh, at low temperature. So you can, um, if you perform the DTT test at different low temperatures, then you should be able to pull out this failure stress curve, which is the failure stress versus temperature. Okay, then if you pull out these two curves together, there will be an intersection point, and this point, uh, the temperature at this point is called critical cracking temperature. So you can see if uh, we are above this temperature, then the thermal stress built up inside the S4 binder is lower than the failure stress, which means the S4 binder will not crack. So above this temperature, you can see the thermal stress built up inside the S4 binder is higher than the failure stress, which means the thermal cracking will happen um, at these temperatures. So by combining the results from BBR and DTT, we can produce a critical cracking temperature of the pavement, which is a very important uh, guideline uh, for us to know if whether or not a certain S4 binder will crack at uh, the low temperature.